Paskatyade Sata Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Karadara Shri Vasari Go Bhaktavinna Krishna, Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare My dear devotees, if you wish to be transformed by the chanting, let me suggest something to you. Just like uh, you take a cloth and bring it into water and then it becomes really full of water, you can bring your mind into the mantra and then the mantra is in the mind. It's no longer a normal mind. It's a mantra mind. <laughs> so how do you do this? Uh, First, you start with Shravanam. As you chant, you just listen to every syllable of the mantra. You let, so to say, the mantra pervade your consciousness. It's not any longer outside, but it's inside. This is the most simple method. Uh, more advanced methods will soon follow. So please, as you chant now, 
collect your mind from wherever it is and just let the mantra pervade it. Chant now. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Ha One more time but little louder Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare And in the next mantra you let the sound of the holy name just pour into your consciousness yes like a golden stream it goes through the ear holes and then enters the consciousness and you will see there is a profound difference to your first chanting and the chanting which you do now please sing very soon or <laughs> now Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare One more time, everybody sing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Rama, 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 Rama,
time Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ma Rama Hare To conclude, please let us all sing again and remember a Prabhupada he once said we should receive the mantra through proper oral reception through the channel of the hearing and you you can see that the, the mantra then will arrive at the shore of your consciousness and from there almost like uh, a transcendental army of angels <laughs> you don't we want no militaristic spirit here it will conquer your consciousness and then uh, spread through all the areas of your awareness so one more time Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Krishna, thank you very much for engaging in uh, as singing and being ready to to absorb yourself in the singing. Anadi Radha, you might like to sit there. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. This garland has one signature. If you look very carefully, uh, Bharati it says <laughs> on it. Thank you. Uh, in my approach to the subject matter of uh, transforming the consciousness, I I'd like to mm, add to what. His Holiness Jayadveta Maharaj shares with us and uh, His Holiness uh, Swayam Bhagavan Keshava Maharaj what he shares with us I, I like to add as much as possible some practical exercises so that you can see uh, uh, how transformation can take place within within the now, so to say, within your present experience. And then with little steps of uh, transformational experiences, and I'm speaking of very small insights here, you can, by the law of increment, you know, it, it builds up, uh, work on the big transformation of your life. Mm, the, uh, a journey starts with a step out of the house, really. And uh, today I want to introduce to you a method called Pratipaksha Bhava. It is uh, found both in the Yoga Sutras of Pratanjali as well as in the Mahabharata. I think you will be quite uh, challenged, or not challenged, mm, it, it's very simple but <laughs> extremely efficient. 
But before I start, I need to say, uh, for transformation of one thing into another, in, so that it can take place, you need a so-called transformative agent. I don't know whether this is an established word or whether this is my own word. You need something that mm, brings one state of being into the, the other. For instance, this book, Looking for Meaning Under the Carpet, that's the title of this book, is now here. If I want to bring it uh, higher on a different level, the level with my notebooks, I will need some force that brings it there. No, I will have to use either my hand or a very strong storm or maybe a tsunami-like earthquake or something that will bring it from one state to the other. And uh, uh, to really experience transformation in your life, you need uh, similarly some transformative agents. Uh, mm. I like very much uh, His Holiness uh, Keshava Maharaj's approach to transformation. He said, D don't always look for progress. Uh, no, no, sorry. Don't always look for perfection and become discouraged. Uh, just mm, appreciate the progress which you have made already. No? Uh, mm. In other words, don't look at how far you still have to go, but look how far you have already gone. Um, and I, I feel this is very important, this mood, um, in order to give us hope and encouragement, uh, some favorable thoughts or attitudes so that we can really translate, transform. I think the the main issue which a devotee in the Krishna consciousness movement, uh, but also other people, uh, face when they look at transformation is uh, the shifting states of consciousness. That is, at one time we may be in a heightened state, an elevated state of consciousness, but then <laughs> we come back to the old thing. It's very nicely expressed in Dhritarashtra's own words. He expresses them a few times, this problem in the Mahabharata. He, uh, he says, uh, to Krishna, I can see as you talk to me, it's like a sudden flash in the darkness. But when you stop talking to me, uh, then again I'm engulfed and surrounded by darkness. Uh, this phenomena happens also later in the Mahabharata, just before the outbreak of the war. At that time, Vidura makes a last attempt to enlighten, uh, enlighten Dhritarashtra. Mm, uh, to tell him you are on the wrong side, you cannot vi win. How can you hope uh, when uh, by supporting Duryodhana, who's uh, su not supported, who who only has Adama, uh, sin and irreligion on his side? How can you hope to win against the Pandavas, who have Krishna, the origin of Dharma, on his? side? Side. This, uh, come on, brother, don't, don't make this fatal mistake of thinking. And then, knowing well that his words will maybe not be strong enough for Dhritarashtra, he calls a saint. Mm, um, his name starts with S uh, by his devotional powers into the room. It's, in the, it's, it's night, and the saint comes through the window, mm, it's a big palatial window, not like these uh, windows who, who only, you know, go half uh, up the wall, it's, it's, they go completely up. And the saint comes in an effulgent 
way through an, the open space of the window and starts to talk about uh, the science of the soul, the eternal soul, which should not engage in uh, activities that bring about bad karma and suffering to, to it on its journey. And again the same thing happens. For a brief moment, um, the Dhritarashtra is quite enlightened. Uh, but um, uh, after the saint goes, he falls back into his usual habit of thought, which is he loves just do Yorana, his son, and wants to support him. He's too, too much uh, bound by material attachment. Why is this so? Why do we have the same? When we come to a program uh, like the Swiss summer camp and we mm, participate in some of the programs and uh, something, a sudden insight uh, enlightens our soul, but then when we come back uh, to our place where we live, maybe for two days we can uh, stop looking at Netflix, uh, but then the third day, and there everything is there, violence, um, and all those impressions which we know are not always very helpful to our spiritual life. How is it that there is a sudden enlightenment and then again we fall back into the same old uh, night from where we are coming? My dear devotees, this is due to sanskaras or deeply ingrained habits. Mm, mm, neuroscience tells you that whenever you do things for uh, repeatedly, uh, you engage in the same uh, neural pathways and as you engage in them, they become deeper ingrained in the jungle, so to say, of your mind. And uh, they become paths which, uh, which you again and again feel tempted to, to walk because it seems to be the easiest way to, to, to lead your life. The way neuroscience expresses it is when neurons fire together, they are used together, that means same areas of our cognitive functions, they wire together, they, 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 are, they build networks and, and although you may not like them any longer, you may think this is not useful for me, this habit or this behavior, you are almost forced, uh, you're pulled back into them. So therefore, you may come from the summer camp or from any spiritual experience or you may even see in Netflix something where you think, wow, now I'm serious for Krishna consciousness. Uh, the, uh, I, I, I can see it, what the author wanted to say. But then, ah, the old uh, uh, sankskaras begin to move a, again and, and attract your mental energy and your habits. It's, it's therefore, the, in India they say it's easier to just push the Himalayas for one meter to the left side than to change a habit. It's easier. <laughs> because you are so, so so how do you say finished? So, so, in, so what you can do is you can create new sanskaras so that the mental energy which used to go left will now go into the new sanskara which you have created, the new impression in your mind and the mental energy go right, goes right. I'm just speaking in Ella language. It's very important that you do mm, uh, create these new thought patterns. Now Narada Muni in the Mahabharata say, gives us one idea how to do it. He says when we are attracted to sense gratification, what we do is we don't think 
at the moment when we are having to make a choice of the pleasure which the sense gratification will give us, but we think of what it will bring in the future, uh, which may be disadvantageous for us. For instance, today I had a marzipan, brombeer, cherry, coconut cream, vegan cake. Mm. And I like marzipan, brombeer, mm. what else? Um, cherry, vegan cake. I, I really like it. It's a, a childhood dream the, mm, of, of myself to eat good, substantial cake. But as I was in the, about finishing, uh, I mean, I didn't have the whole cake. I had a, a, a part and parcel of the cake. The rest was, I think, going to Jai Gopal or other, <laughs> other members. So, so, when, uh, so when I knew if I, uh, I like to eat the whole thing. I also have the capacity. I'm a Hare Krishna. I have a tremendous eating capacity. Uh, mm, mm, uh, but I know, knew if I would finish the whole thing, uh, I would most probably become lame and dull and immovable in the evening. So uh, I was thinking, now I was practicing uh, uh, putting my mind into another gear. I th did not think of the momentary pleasure which the cake would give me as it would pass over my tongue. Uh, I was thinking of the evening uh, where uh, I would suffer from the consequence. And I have done this many times. I eat now half of what I ate when I was young per meal because I have cultivated these thoughts. Now to go a little bit more into it, I want to uh, uh, tell you how um, uh, Patanjali expresses it. He says, when we find out that we are harassed by negative thoughts, one should cultivate counteracting thoughts. This uh, thought pattern, this new thought pattern is called, um, can I have your mobile microphone, please? And can you help an old man? Sorry, I have something with my knees at the moment. One moment. See, this is what old age means. And one day you will be like this. <laughs> Sorry, I did. Legs have fallen asleep. Good, thank you. This is called in Sanskrit. It's a very important word, word for us here. Rati. in contact with negative thoughts like violence. Uh, mm. At that time, you think of the ongoing suffering and ignorance which is created through violence. Vyasadev makes a very interesting comment. He says, mm, when you see your chitta becoming influenced by negative or counterproductive thoughts, you, when your consciousness is uh, invaded by them, mm, they are called vitakas, these thoughts. Mm, 
you think like this. Mm. I'm burning in the fire of this world and I have taken shelter in sadhana, mm, spiritual practice, by committing myself to the welfare of all creatures. So I have re already renounced uh, thoughts of violence, but now uh, there is the thought of revenge, someone who attacked me, I want to give it back to him in the same coin. No? So if I again resort or go back to these thoughts, I am behaving, listen to this, like a dog who licks his vomit. This is, of course, a very strong opposite thought. No? Here is someone who thinks uh, a violent thought about someone. Oh, he is really too much. Look how he is dressed. Look at his haircut. Look how he comes across. And so on. And the, the moment you feel yourself, you feel such a thing, you say, No, no, I have taken to the spiritual path to be compassionate, to be non-judgmental. Now if I go back to these old thoughts, it's really not good. And a strong image is used, the image of, of, uh, of a canine, of what is it, a dog who, who licks something which he has already given up. Uh, so the more you pre start to d discipline your mind by uh, bringing it to an opposite thought, you can uh, stop the negative uh, thought pattern, you can eliminate it by the mind. No? Uh, I think deep inside, we, for instance, I want to now bring this in, in the frame of our sadhana chanting, deep inside we all want to be ecstatic. We all want to chant. We all desire the special blessings which come from good chanting. We want also to purify the mirror of our heart. We want to extinguish the miseries of material existence. We want to awaken our spiritual desires. But if we don't learn to practice opposite thinking at the time when we are lazy, when we are unmotivated, when we are uh, um, uh, in the superficial um, uh, level of rejecting that what we know brings us where we want to go, then we, uh, we, we can, uh, uh, we can, uh, we, we can never get there. Uh, I, I took part in a Japa meditation uh, of um, a Japa workshop of God Brother Mahatma. I wanted to see what does he do. And he worked with affirmation and I thought, oh no, affirmation, uh, this ego inflation practice, this is not what I do, I'm, I'm a strict philosopher. Mm, uh, but I, I just uh, tried what he wanted, what he say, said. He said, mm, uh, I just say to yourself before you sit down, I want to chant. I'm so fortunate that I have the holy name. And now I get to chant. I'm so fortunate I have the time now, the opportunity to chant. And finally, I love to chant. I'm so fortunate th that I love to chant. And you know, Yes, on one level it's a mental game. You use one thought to go against another thought. But it is authorized in, in, uh, in our scriptures. Even the Bhagavatam has, uh, has something in the seventh canto uh, on this. There's a series of things that, for instance, when you are covered with lusty thoughts, uh, then, oh my God, I wish to remember this at this moment. How was it? Uh, Keshava Maharaj, are you with us? Uh, 
Do you remember the seventh canto? There was a, it's a list. I bring it to you tomorrow. Um, what do you think uh, when you have one thought to oppose it and so on? It's an authorized process. It's called removing a thorn by another thorn. In other words, removing a not so good image in the mind uh, with a, a mental attitude which is, which is there. But then it says, it gives prescription how to deal with lust and greed um, uh, uh, and, and so on. It's always about thinking the neg about the negative outcome which greed and anger bring about. And then it says, one can obtain all this by serving one's spiritual master. This is then the most spiritual approach. And don't worry, I will come to these most spiritual things. But I want to start where many of us are uh, who uh, uh, can uh, see an immediate benefit by, by doing this counteracting thought. One very powerful counteracting for thought, which is uh, uh, recommended, is uh, showing gratitude. And I have uh, entitled uh, this subject, The Sadhana of Thank You. Uh, uh, what I will tell you now, because this is something which Krishna himself teaches. Um, uh, if you learn to be to express gratitude, I think we should not just say thank you. We should express it properly. But I will come to this. Uh, something changes in your inner mind. In, Ramay in Ramayan, the sage Valmiki says that, ec uh, that expressing gratitude is actually a limb of sad Sanatandama. I didn't know this. He says, Kritichya parikata vyam esha dharma sanatana. One should acknowledge a favor and try to pay it back. This is Sanatan Dharma. So when something good was done to you, acknowledge uh, it, you have done this, you have uh, brought me water or a Bharati garland um, and so on and uh, try to give it back. This is Sanatandama. Krishna himself is eternally grateful. Mm, uh, gratitude, to show gratitude in other words, is such an important point of eternal dharma that God himself adorns it as one of his eternal qualities. You all know from Nectar of Devotion, uh, Rupa Goswami's uh, list of 64 qualities of Krishna and one of them is his krita gya or grateful. Mm, uh, this is Rupa Goswami's uh, definition of a grateful person. A grateful person is he who fully acknowledges the services and favors that others have performed for him. Mm. And he gives an example of Krishna uh, being grateful to Draupadi. Krishna says, my heart feels increasingly indebted by a debt that does not seem to go away. This is the debt of gratitude which I accrued when Draupadi loudly cry cried out to me, even though I was situated far away in Dwaraka. The Shastras inform us that Krishna was playing dice at the moment where mm, uh, Draupadi was lost in a game of dice and um, he started to lose. He played against Rukmini and Rukmini knew Krishna never loses. Even if he makes a wrong throw, 
the dice are usually on his side and then they turn over in Krishna's favor. So she noticed something very inauspicious is happening and said, you're losing my Lord, What's r is there something wrong? Yes, said Krishna, there's something very wrong. At this moment, my devotee Draupadi is, 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 is brought into the assembly hall where an attempt will be made to uh, disrobe her. Oh, said to Rukmini, then quickly go there. Uh, Krishna said, I won't reach in time. Well, said Rukmini, Rukmini, aren't you already there as the Paramatma in all hearts? It's not that simple, said Krishna. The Krishna uh, continued to play. Rukmini said, you, you, you continue to play. Yes, there's nothing I can do, said Krishna. Then all of a sudden, in a distraught game of dice, Krishna says, now I can go. Draupadi has built a road for me, the road of her tears. This was exactly the moment when Draupadi did this classical gesture of surrendering herself to Krishna and calling loudly the various names of Krishna. Govinda, Govinda. Mukunda, Mukunda. Janardana. Janardana, and cried. And uh, at that moment, uh, Krishna uh, could, uh, was, was, was going because he felt a depth of gratitude. And even after this, um, after he had saved Draupadi, Krishna um, did not uh, forget about this uh, calling of Draupadi. He said, this is daily going, on, becoming greater and greater and greater in my heart and I must do something. I would like, because, before I g guide you into some exercises on, and going a little deeper even in this subject, uh, tell you a little bit about the lost culture of um, gratitude. Uh, there is a social theory at the moment in this world, it's the theory of individualism, which means the interest of the individual ranges supreme over over other interests. No, it's the me culture, uh, me first. Um, my, it must be all right for me, it must be good for me. But the Vedic uh, tradition feels, no, we are indebted. We have debts of gratitude to pay. And in order to relieve ourselves of them, we have to perform five yagyas daily. Listen to this. This is Vedic culture. Don't worry, I will not tell you to do five yagyas daily. But I just wish you to explore another mindset, another perspective on reality, which is radically opposed to this, this uh, modern view of seeing. First of all, you are, have to be, you are supposed to be grateful that you have taken birth. It's well, birth, but birthday is when I get my presents. Uh, what does this have to do with anything spiritual? No, uh, you are supposed to be to acknowledge. Wow, I was once a bodiless soul, drifting around. I've taken birth, and in order to to to. Uh, you know, how do you say, relieve yourself of this debt which you have. You, you, you think, who have I taken birth with? My father and my mother. But who was their father and their mother? And their father and their mother? My mother and my father would not have taken birth, wouldn't have given me birth if they would not have taken birth. So in other words, you go to the Petris and perform a Petri Yakya. You offer regular obeys, uh, offerings to your forefathers. 
Then there is the Deva Yagya. Uh, no, sorry. You have bodily functions. Uh, just now when I got up and uh, I needed some help, my legs were not working. In the Vedic worldview, you understand the legs are taken care by one particular devata. Or evacuation, you know, going to the bathroom and so on. Uh, all your limbs are directed by the devatas. You, so you daily worship the, the different demigods so that your bodily functions will continue nicely. Then you receive so much wisdom, my dear devotees. Almost uh, so much wisdom. This is, uh, uh, you have to be grateful to the rishis, to the saints in the past who saw this uh, uh, wisdom by divine vision and who put it down. So in Vedic culture you would do a rishi yagya every day. Then you are not alone on this planet. You are interconnected. You are with so many other living entities. Do you know how many people were uh, busy in putting the meal on your table? The farmers who brought the vegetables, uh, the seed of the vegetables on the farm, the transporters, boo, the the cows, most of you drink cow milk, uh, uh, who gave you cow milk. And you have a connection to all of these. So therefore you do the Atiti Yagya. You welcome the guests mm, uh, in your home, uh, just as a sign that I care for all these unknown people, especially the Atiti, the ones who are not mm, uh, coming uh, with a uh, with a uh, with a visit list, they, you have not visit, you have not invited them, and then in this way, I think you get the idea. You realize you are not alone on this planet. You are in a vast network work, and you have to pay back the the, the by these yagyas. When someone doesn't perform these yagyas in the Vedic idea. He accrues a tremendous debt of karma. Uh, in my first television speech in this life, first program, VDR, was it VDR or ZDF? I don't remember. But it was, it was my, even my Oma, my grandmother saw me and she said, why do you always have to provoke people? <laughs> uh, I, I read this. Data aprada jai bio yo bungte stena eva saha. He who lives ungratefully without performing yagyas is certainly a thief. This is in the Bhagavad Gita 3.12. If you don't show gratitude, first of all, if you don't have any consciousness, that you should be, or awareness that you should be grateful, and then if you cannot show this, uh, what will be your life? For instance, if you don't show gratitude to your parents, my dear devotees, what is the guarantee that you get good parents in an another life? If you don't show gratitude to, to, to your guru, or the people who have given you wisdom, uh, why should you be gifted with a bona fide guru in your next life. It is said in the 11th canto, 11541, that you don't have to make the culture of expressing gratitude so complicated. Um, you, it is said, all types of living entities are parts of Lord Krishna and by serving Krishna, you don't need to serve uh, the Petris, your ancestors, the Devas, the Rishis, uh, the unannounced guests and the Bhutas separately. No? But if you serve Krishna, you know this from the Bhagavatam, fifth canto also, you give uh, water to the root of the tree and all the branches, um, twigs, and leaves are certainly water. But you have to show gratitude. I, I want to speak about one 
this we already know and we go, oh yeah, ein Glück, ein Glück, uh, I'm so fortunate, I don't have to make my life more complicated. But there is one indebtedness which I personally have come to believe you can't avoid. It's the great, great indebtedness towards your parents. See, Krishna expresses uh, the need to be grateful of, of the need of each and every single individual to be grateful to his parents in these words in the Bhagavatam. Uh, Sarvata sambhavo deho janita pushito yata natayo yati nirvesham pitro martya shatayusha. With this body, Krishna says, one can acquire all the goals of life. No? With this body, I can eat if my goal is uh, sensual delights. I, I, can, I can also pursue dharma. I can inquire about my dharma and do my dharma. I can, with this body, do sanatan dharma and uh, please Lord Krishna and so on. So with one's body, one can acquire all the goals of life. And it is one's parents who give the body birth and nourishment also. You see uh, our um, highly uh, concentrated Leela Shravanti, Leela, Lega Shravanti, she has a baby and a mobile to telephone. Uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, see the baby, this lying on her and uh, she will know how to uh, she has given birth to the baby. I heard um, her husband was phoning me. Now is an important time. Can you please pray? And I did my best. And uh, she takes so much care of the baby. The baby is practically always with you, I think, isn't it? Always the Jaini Thai. And she will take care of his nourishment. He will, she will feed the baby with just the right things the baby needs. Um, and the, Krishna continues, for this, therefore no mortal man can repay his debts to his parents, even if he served them for a full lifetime of a hundred years. <laughs> this, this, this gratitude towards one's parents has to be Acknowledged first of all, krita uh, gya. Um, you have to, and then you have to express it in some practical actions. It's very, very important. You will hear in a moment why it is so important. So again, what is gratitude? The Sanskrit term is krita gyata, which literally means acknowledgement of what has been done for us. You are aware enough, you are conscious enough, you are not foggy brained, you are clear brained and you can acknowledge, oh yeah, I see that, I see this. If my parents would not have been mm, uh, there mm, mm, and if they wouldn't have felt uh, so much uh, the calling to, uh, to bring a family into this world, hmm? then where would I be? Oh, and furthermore, if my parents would not have fed me and protected me uh, in all possible ways, how could I have this human form of life in which I can pursue um, dharma, artha, karma, moksha, and also uh, the fifth goal of life? the desire to develop prema. Mm. And so a grateful person is therefore known as kritagya, uh, literally, um, uh, or a favor acknowledger. Favor means krita 
And acknowledger means gya. He knows this was done for me. This was very, is very nice. On the other hand, my dear devotees, an ungrateful person is called in Sanskrit krita gna with g, not with j. Yes, this is a favor. And Gna, Gna like no, knowing, is an acknowledger of a favor. And the opposite is called a Krita. Gna, with G. Such a person is a mindless fool. Mm -mm. an ungrateful person uh, who destroys actually, gna means to destroy, the acknowledgement of what has been done for him or her. She, the person goes actually against it and says, no, 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 I, my, my father, my father, my father is an old Nazi. He had totally authoritarian uh, educational methods he spoiled me, and now I have to liberate myself from the bad things my father did to me. This is called a krita gna, someone who destroys the acknowledgement of what has been done for him or her. Prabhu, Mataji, we don't speak about educational methods here. We don't speak about Childhood trauma, which has maybe also come uh, together with, with the good things. We just speak about this one fact. We have received the body and we have been nourished by them. There is in the Ramayana a very interesting statement. and It will be the last for today before I go into an exercise with you. There are atonements, says the Ra Ramayana, suggested in scriptures for a person who kills a brahmana. Oh, oh, I killed a brahmana. I must make an atonement. Mm. There are atonement, atonements for a person who drinks alcohol. Oh, no, uh, I was uh, drinking alcohol. Missed, but I will uh, make an atonement. There are atonements uh, for one who steals wealth or who willingly breaks a vow. You can do good. You can write this again. However, there is no atonement anywhere for someone who is ungrateful. Wow! Ramayan. We quote Ramayan. Sakrit Eva Prapanayas. We think it's an authorized scripture. So we might as well look at on this, no? Mm. So what you do is with this idea of pratipaksha bhava or opposite thinking is you try to go to the place of gratitude, uh, a, a place where the negative thoughts which are, in this case, we talk about uh, ungratefulness, or what is it called? Ungrateful, yeah, being ungrateful, uh, is replaced with gratefulness. And you will see that especially teacher pain has so many gifts for you, so many deeper understandings. Uh, in many cases, it has the powerful, almost explosive teaching of detachment from the world, which is so difficult for us to, to have. Um, mm, I know I had a, we had a very nice devotee in our zone. He was the leader of the zone. Something happened to him. Uh, but uh, he was very 
nice to um, to uh, very nice um, mm, the engaged and a very nice character then something medical happened to him um, and he describes how Srila Prabhupada was very stern with him and he sent him uh, to the east what is it called uh, please help me east Germany east Russia it's over the Iron Curtain thank you sorry um, uh, he sent him over the Iron Curtain to a place uh, and, and he asked him to print books and he, he did this with very, uh, uh, he didn't want to go there my dear devotees going to the Iron Curtain countries oof, that was so discouraging there was nothing to eat literally we had almonds and yogurt for one month You always had to run away from the police who followed your programs. And in the end, you, well, you needed to cross the country, the border with VIX, and you needed to oh, hide yourself so much and then do these preaching programs. And it was, it was tough, sleeping in vans, in the winter and um, being really like on the chase uh, I remember running for three weeks away from the secret police of Hungary and then they caught me at the end Hare uh, <laughs> Krishna all this anxiety and so on but uh, so, so he leaded was leading this, these programs and uh, once he came back to Prabhupada with a pile of books which he had printed in various languages, Eastern uh, language, you know, Iron Curtain languages and so on. And uh, there was a moving exchange. I've seen photos of the exchange. Uh, Prabhupada looks at him and is so happy and he says, do you now understand why I sent you uh, to these difficult places? And this devotee broke down crying and said, yes, I understand. You, 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 by giving me this order, you have made me into what I am now, that I can serve, that I have oh, I surrendered and so on. So, yes, I want to see with you, uh, I want to ask you, if you can maybe isolate a thing in your life, an event in your life, where you first thought, oh, this is not good. And then by applying this Pratipakshabhava, or opposite thinking, come to the platform of Kritagya on acknowledge, uh, acknowledging a hidden or covered favor that was given to you. I request you to turn to your neighbor and uh, yes, I'm sorry, I know some of us are in the digesting mode and would like to be entertained, but uh, no, mm, not in this class. Uh, later, yes, some entertainment will follow. Um, please find a, a, yes. do you understand the, the method? You have to, no, so, so. You have to identify a situation which was difficult for you and instead of lamenting and uh, saying, oh, this was really not good, you go to the place where you try to uh, uh, not lament, but be thankful. It, it, there are some things where we can't be thankful, no? When we lose our leg, for instance, it may be difficult. Uh, everyone has a leg on. <laughs> uh, uh, is it clear? 
opposite thinking. It's a new thought. I know. You have to go to the opposite thing and see if it, if it will work. I know you have never done it. It's the first time. But it's a sadhana. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You have three more minutes. You have two more minutes or one and a half more minutes. Hare Krishna, Hari Bol. <laughs> so nice to see you, Hari Bol Pamus. <laughs> you you can continue discussing this when you are outside of the 
classroom, so to say, of the lecture hall. Uh, Haribol, <laughs> Mangala, I see you. <laughs> like Radha Kriva, <laughs> talking with the hands. Yes, uh, so, so, my dear devotees, this was a difficult exercise. Uh, there are easier exercises. Um, uh, I want to again read to you because the Yoga Sutras explain so clearly what we find in the Mahabharata and Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam. I want to read you again the method. Upon being harassed by negative thoughts, one should cultivate counteracting thoughts. For instance, negative thoughts uh, here related to violence or we could also say fear is a negative thought, no? Anxiety, disappointment. When you have these negative, when you have these thoughts, you lose so much of your strength, my dear devotees. There are uh, examples of this. For instance, they made one person angry for one hour and then asked him to, what is it? What, what is this English word when you do like this? <sighs> Breathe out or, yeah. <sighs> you know what this is. Yes. So they took this condensed air and fed it to a guinea pig and they were killing. They had enough poison from this to kill 99 guinea pigs. I, I don't like the animal uh, experiments, uh, just like you. But to think, when and when you have a negative thought like anger, you you will let it out and and harm the, and pay back the other person who made you, you angry. Uh, to, to think like this is as ignorant as thinking that by drinking a glass of poison, the other person will suffer. You cannot allow these negative thoughts in your mind. They weaken you. And therefore it is said, negative thoughts mm, can be slight in intensity, moderate or extreme in intensity. One should cultivate counteracting thoughts, namely thoughts that, that the end result of these negative thoughts are ongoing suffering and ignorance. When you eliminate your negative thoughts, in other words, you transform them into other type of thoughts like gratitude or, or compassionate thought, sattvic thoughts, then you will uh, uh, eliminate weakness in you and you will, uh, it, uh, it is said, you will uh, receive certain strengths and gifts in you. That's why you see uh, great devotees, they don't allow themselves to be uh, uh, put down by um, being under the clouds, so to say, with their thoughts. No, they, they think, okay, I'm now maybe a little in in anxiety, will I be successful in my effort? They, uh, they will think, oh, um, let me exchange this anxiety with the thought, Krishna is in control in my life. And at that moment, they lose the anxiety, the fear, and so on, because they have given themselves into the hands of Krishna. Thank you very much. Um, this was the first part. Uh, I, I hope it's a practical thing. If you wish to read more about these things, I can highly recommend to you uh, the second chapter of Patanjali Yoga Sutras, verses 33 to verses 34. And tomorrow 
I will provide you with uh, some uh, examples from the Bhagavatam about exchanging one type of thought, negative thought that weakens you uh, with a positive thought. Today we were dealing a little bit with gratefulness, with gratitude. Um, I, I personally uh, uh, did this when I came up to Kiental. I must admit to you, I'm very, very physically and mentally exhausted after the most uh, intense tour I've ever done in this lifetime. America, Italy, Austria, everywhere, and full program everywhere. So I came up with a car. Uh, oh, I thought, oh, oh, the mountains limit me. I'm a man of the oceans of freedom. Um, oh, and I will, I will take part in, uh, um, as I will take part in good discussions. But then, so many devotees will tell me how they have divorced and how this problem is there, and that problem. And uh, and I was really almost saying to my driver, "Let's turn around." Uh, <laughs> But then I thought, no, this is a negative thought. This is a weak thought. Let me transform it by thinking, wow, I will see deities. I will see Jayadvaita Maharaj. I will see Keshava Maharaj. I will see all the devotees. And I will have maybe an opportunity to do service, to bring some light in their lives by some good, helpful uh, tips from the Vedic uh, wisdom texts and so on. And with this opposite thinking, I gained strength and I felt I'm at the best place in the universe right now in the uh, Swiss mountains. Hare Krishna. <laughs> opposite thinking, very important. It's a small little point, but there's a deep, deep, deep philosophy behind it. If you don't learn the transformation of the small steps, you will never uh, arrive at the big transformation of the heart. And uh, this is a very small step. It is something which will give immediately palpable, result, palpable heißt fühlbare uh, uh, Ergebnisse. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's. Uh, why is it so powerful? Because you create new sanskaras by this. If you like to express it in a, a neuro uh, language, you create a new neuropath in here. This is called neuroplastis. Ah, plasticity. It means you have the p opportunity. You're not a slave of your gray mass up there, but you have the opportunity to create new patterns of thought and of, uh, uh, of habits and so on. And you can do this really easy. It all starts in the mind with this Pratipaksha Bhavana. Yes? I think it's so clear that we don't require questions. Let us. Uh, <laughs> you are you're laughing so nicely. <laughs> no, it is clear. Um, I want to just. Uh, we have ten minutes to six. Maybe we should go into some ten minutes of questions and then a little ten minutes of kirtan. Here is Jai Gopal. Hare Krishna. Um, you spoken about. Um, great urgency to be grateful to one's parents and you also mentioned that it doesn't has it's not considering educational raising issues or traumatic experiences, experiences or yeah. emotional hurt um, but when I look into this there are some things where, which kind of um, block us to be have developed this feeling of gratefulness due to maybe some things which happened which yeah. which 
hurt us and um, maybe you could say something to that it's also that gradi maybe uh, the, the relationships have distanced a bit due to this is this gratitude also you can do something from distance or in yeah maybe I, I think you understand mm -hmm. what I mean the the thank you very much the reason why gratitude is given or let us say the place where gratitude is focused is on this uh, uh, mm, point of they have given birth to me. They have given uh, me a body which is f during this present time the possibility of all my opportunity. I mean the, the foundation of all my opportunities. You can play medanga um, uh, with the a body received from the family Volta. Uh, you know, um, and you can pursue your sadhana with this body and the mind which you have received. Now, yes, there are a few uh, other things which came along. Um, let me just tell it to, uh, let me give a personal example. I was so much a revolutionary in my family. I had such a difficult relationship with my father. Mm. And uh, the, there are some scenes uh, between me and my father which were very, very um, bad, really. From his side towards me and from my side towards him. I do not make, wish to make this public. It was really bad. I mean, if you would hear it, it was really bad. And I always remembered that more than anything else. Up to, the t to my 50th birthday, around that time. Then my parents had visited me. Uh, a dutiful family visit, uh, and um, uh, I was with my, uh, I had to take care of my parents, they are old parents and some culture, so I thought, let us listen to an opera. So we went to an opera, and on the way, I tried to tell, uh, my father said, so, so your thinking is, is different in many ways from ours. Mm, uh, what do you think about the value of the performing arts? And I started then to explain. I was a little, uh, well, Father, there are art forms that have elevating uh, effect that is called sattvic, and I take you to a Bach, it was not an opera, it was a mu or organ music, you know, I, we, we go to a Bach concert now, Bach is a very religious, that is very sattvic, but then there are art forms which have, and immediately my father interrupted me. And he began to talk his things, he knows uh, uh, much more than I will ever know about culture and so on. And I thought to me, oh, no, there he is again, the authoritarian know-it-all, <laughs> you know. And he has just asked me about my thinking. I'm trying to go through the heavy work to educate my father about my thinking. And what does he do? He cuts me in the midst of the sentence. I have not even finished my thought. And He's always like this. He, when I was young, he gave me a beating. He pulled my pants down and he took a stick and beat me on the popo. And now this, he has not changed a bit. This was physical beating, now he does intellectual beating. Oh. Um, you know. Then I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. He follows a certain thought pattern. He cannot get out of it so easy. He thinks fathers are meant to educate their children in whatever state they are. He means well, 
wait a minute, hold yourself. And something changed in the energy. I cannot explain to you, when I was ready to do my Pratibhaksha Bhavana, thinking in the opposite way, the whole, he stopped and said, oh, I'm sorry, I, I interrupted you, isn't it? You, you didn't tell me your, your thought on the performing arts. Uh, please continue. I said, really? I don't think you are interested in... I am interested! <laughs> so he could listen to me 10 minutes. That's a world record. <laughs> and so on. This is uh, really, this is very powerful to change. Negative thoughts will bring suffering to you and to the others. Uh, sattvic thoughts, which it's not positive thinking, it is opposite thinking. No? That will bring you uh, to. Uh, opposite means away from tamasic and rajasic thought to more enlightened or wise thoughts. Mm -hmm. that, that helped. I mean, he's very submissive. Uh, mm, for 15 minutes. <laughs> he says something is changing. And uh, we enjoy a very nice discussion uh, platform now. Very rare, though, but uh, once a year, but uh, mm, better than before that. There was 10 years of silence from my side and his side because we, we really went opposite ways. Mm. So, yes, you may still remember there are some things which are not so positive which came with your parents but we are now talking about something else and we talk about the harm which you inflict upon yourself and the other people by negative thinking Does anyone else of you wish to pose a question? Yes, I, I saw just Gorahari just next to you. Yes, Gorahari. It will be the last question for today, but uh, yes. Thank you, Gomash. I was thinking that very often those thoughts are not, they are so subtle, and very often you are cultivating <laughs> negative thoughts just by habit, and we are not able actually to catch it on the right time to make the change. Do you have any advice on how to become more aware of the thoughts that you have? It's a practice, like when you chant, for instance, uh, there is a very fine border when you're still focused, and uh, I mean, there's a, there a time when you're uh, focused, and then you're not focused any longer. And there's a fine border between the two. It's almost as fine as the, <laughs> as the border between wakefulness and sleep. You know, you lay down and when are you exactly transitioning from one state of consciousness to the other or, or not consciousness, awareness to another. It's very difficult to say. I would say whenever you catch yourself you know, there are witch hunters there are scandal hunters, there are butterfly hunters. You should become a bad thought hunter uh, and catch it uh, and then replace it. And this is a transforming uh, thing. It is, it is transformation in the real sense of the word. You take one thing and bring it into another state by maintaining the energy, the same energy. And Keshava Maharaj told me, uh, told us, uh, I don't know about, you know, there is a fear. Uh, there is when you when you are asked to do a public speaking, when you are not so accustomed and you don't do it so regularly you are generally a little bit afraid of it. And before public speaking, what happens is that, that you come, um, that there is some energy or adrenaline uh, 
arising. Now, if your mind is going in the direction, oh, I will fail, I will say the wrong word, I will stutter, I will use a long sequ wrong sequence of logic, then you will fail. But if you use that same energy, chemically you will call it adrenaline, there is, uh, psychologically you would call it uh, another word, which I don't know at this moment, uh, use the same energy, I can really do, uh, uh, in, increase my, you know, I can really do something good with my public speaking. Then the same energy will go the other path. It's the same energy, but you have transformed it. <laughs> I have a personal story to tell, because we used to have these large concerts. I think some of you have seen on on the uh, you know these Goranga Bhajan group concerts, and they were they were sometimes for one. There were like 12,000 people before the curtain, and I was behind the curtain. And I mm, oh, looked at that. So many people are before the curtain. And like all of you, I have an issue with sometimes being not confident in my abilities. I, I think I'm really not something special, mm, uh, and so on. And I, <sighs> then I said to him, I have two, two options now. I can call the Graveyard Institute um, and they can bring me to the graveyard. <laughs> or I can just, uh, just jump out there and, uh, and just say, I'm so happy that you're there. I'm a little nervous, please excuse me. Um, wouldn't you be nervous to talk before so many people and then to take off from there, you know, and, uh, and then it comes out very nice. So it's the same energy and you have to catch it and then direct it. Pratipaksha, Pratipaksha, the word, the complete word is bhavana, not bhavana. Then you have the bhavana, there should be an N-A, and then you have the super good Sanskrit. Ba N A, mm. uh, uh, so you you can, and you know how you can make the switch. Listen, everyone. It's the last thing which you will hear today from, yes, uh, from the presentations. Mm. You can either believe everything is dependent on your own steam, on your own qualities, on your intelligence. Or you can believe that Krishna is the controller. Have you heard this word, Krishna is the controller? Is it true only in the books or in life as well? It, it is. Let's theoretically believe it. No, Krishna is the controller. And then Prabhupada always used to say, Krishna can perform anything. His Jiva Goswami said, he is to be praised because of his wonderful activities. And um, when you give your uh, life in his hand and you surrender to him, then uh, yes, he might use you. It's still up to him, but you, be, you have a chance, a good chance. Mm. So to get out of the controller mood and to enter the surrendered mood, that will help you to change drastically your whole outlook to life. Good. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to respect your time. We will just do a short kirtan and then we will end 15 minutes earlier. And then we have more time. Hare. Oh yeah, please sit properly. This belongs still to the to the cause, so to say. <laughs> oh, now we sing again. We did this already. No, no. Uh, today we will sing a song which we have never sung before. 
It's called Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, with full attention <laughs> and deep absorption. No, the idea is, uh, y let the mantra come into your mind. In other words, you receive the mantra, and the second thing is, gets a little bit more advanced now, and bring the mind into the mantra. In other words, it is full, uh, it's mute, mutual pervase, pervasion. Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Dhyana Chandra Goswami instructs in his Bharati that uh, these two functions create an equilibrium in the mind where the mind is balanced and is totally present. Mm. The first function is to focus the mind on the mantra and the second function which you do afterwards is you allow the mantra to flow into the mind and you are either focusing or you are receiving until the two functions become what is called samatha and it becomes equalized and you are in an almost um, yeah, deeply absorbed state. Please sing now. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Nama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Please sing again, everyone. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare
Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Please one more time Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Nista Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Daya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Babu Pada Chila Babu Pada Daya Gauda Nitai Daya Gauda Nitai Gauda Nitai Daya Gauda Nitai Daya Radha Shama Sunda Radha Shama Sunda Radha Shama Sunda Radhe a homework for you. So during this uh, ongoing seminar, uh, to today and tomorrow, kindly practice this pra Prati Paksha Bhavana, the opposite uh, thinking. If you find yourself overwhelmed or even harassed by, I would say, weak thoughts even, uh, try to replace them with opposite thoughts which will give you sufficient strength and preferably if you want to add you know if you want to 
put to this exercise the absolute spiritual bhakti dimension, think uh, 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 about Krishna. Krishna is here, Krishna is in all the interactions. Try to carve out of the hardwood of your life the beautiful smiling face of Krishna. You, what, what could Krishna, uh, why could Krishna have arranged this for you? What would please Krishna if you would learn uh, in this situation to replace another thought and another behavior? It will be a really exciting exercise, I promise you. Uh, good. So, Hare Krishna. Krishna, dear devotees, just one short uh, announcement for the e evening program. Um, Sandhyarti will be at quarter past seven, and I really hope you've been intensely praying and longing for Shia Muna Devi and Shri Govardhan, because at quarter to eight sharp, uh, we will leave in procession with deities to our evening uh, kirtan spot. So please be all on time, quarter to eight. Hare Krishna. Krishna. So, Bir Krishna Prabhu and Astor, some Bir Krishna and Astor, please come to me. Yeah. 